Hi guys. I'm here today and we are, I'm super excited, like super excited. We're doing the tour of Italy. It's gonna be amazing, just absolutely amazing. So what we're gonna be going over today is Italian liqueurs. And we're not gonna be doing the wines. We're gonna talk a little bit about those things, but um, mainly, I don't know if you guys know this, I, I grew up in an Italian-American family, mostly uh, Northern Italy, and eating was this amazing event. And um, we would worry about it, spend half of our lives preparing for it, and in 10 minutes it was gone. Um, but we have a lot of uh, mythos around our food and how to consume things and it has leaked over into Italian liqueurs. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of um, digestives and um, like uh, we call them digestivo and aperitivo. Aperitif, I believe, and digestif is how most people say them. And there's two kinds. One um, is the aperitivo is to, to wet your palate, wet your appetite, Get the juices in your belly going. Hey, Levi. Finally able to catch one of these. Yay! I'm so excited. I'm so excited that I get to share Italian drinking culture because it revolves, like everything in Italian culture, around food. So the aperitivo, or the aperitif, is a drink that settles your stomach, gets all the juices flowing, and gets you ready for your meal. I don't know. I can, I can just hear my mother, you know, she would always be like, there can't be a draft, you'll get indigestion. Don't talk too much, you'll get indigestion. Don't drink while you're eating or you'll get indigestion. We're obsessed about digestion and food and, and everything. So this plays into that larger culture. But how is everybody doing today? Does anybody uh, know a little bit about digestivos and aperitivos? Anybody, anybody? Digestive over here is a biscuit. <laughs> Right, right. So we have a uh, we have pizzelles. You know, they're like little um, pressed cookies. They kind of look like intricate snowflakes, um, and they have anise star in them. So it has that licorice-like flavor. Even though it's anise, it's it's most akin to to licorice. And we have a few alcohols here that are anise uh, based, and a lot of the um, aperitivos and digestivos are very closely held secrets. Some of them have over 70 herbs in them. And we can, I'll tell you what the top notes are and what they do and I'll go through the different alcohols, where they come from in Italy, how they were founded, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, happy Friday. Hey Challenger, how are you? Um, but we'll go through a yield tour of Italy and I'll tell you what they are, when to drink them, what they taste like, how to mix them up, and how to uh, make your meal the best. So, um, so the, I, you see, I, we went and I said, you know, there are a few things that I really want in the liquor cabinet that we haven't had. Um, and one of them was strega. Strega uh, actually means witch. It's from Benevento. So Benevento, Italy um, has a, a folklore about the town that all the witches in the world meet in Benevento. And so their liqueur, their town liqueur, is called Strega, which means witch, which is also my nickname, because my name is Trey, and all my friends call me Trega. <laughs> so, but they mean that in a very loving way. They do, they do. And if you say any different, I'll turn you into a toad. Um, so we went to the liquor store last night, and I got really excited and I was telling him, this is for this, this is for that. And he's like, babe, you've got to write this down or save it for stream because he didn't want to hear it. All he wants is grappa. So grappa is uh, probably one of the more famous uh, digestivos that uh, most of you have heard of other than amari, like amaretos and, and things like that. Um, and I introduced him to grappa because Italian women love to feed their boys, like a lot of food. And if you just give them a little bit of grappa, which is you put it in a very tiny glass for a very big reason, okay, we'll get there. And, and uh, you feed your boy, you put the grappa in the glass, 
He puts it in his belly, and then magically all the bathrooms are filled in the household and they're ready for another course in like five minutes. So that's why women across the world love grappa. So you know, see he's already in chat. Grappa, grappa. <laughs> Last time I had an anise-based drink, it was Pernod, and I was drinking it the night before I had a doctor's appointment, woke up the next morning with a few glasses of water, and I don't remember going to the doctor's. Yeah, um, yeah, ouzo, any kind of like anise flavor, they, they pack a punch. All of these liqueurs pack a punch. So you will not see me, we're gonna do the tour of Italy, but you will not see me finish a drink because I don't wanna die. These are like 40% alcohol, <laughs> but, um, and I'm going to show you my favorites. Um, yes, dear, it cleans you out. It makes Drapadouski live up to his name. So, and um, I picked a grappa today that is, is really, really nice. And we will get into it. Nice fat Italian label with all these words that I'm not going to translate for you. Um, but so I, I wrote down a whole bunch of notes after I got home, as I was talking to him about each individual one, and he sat there so patiently, so patiently and lovingly. Relationship goals, I'm telling you. Um, so aperitivos, like I said, they open up your palate, they cleanse it, they get your digestive juices flowing. They're, they tend to be a lot sweeter, and when they're mixed, they're mixed with um, uh, gassi uh, like bubbly wine, like gaseosa. Um, so you mix with Prosecco, uh, Spumanti, um, just anything to get all your, of your digestive uh, juices going. Um, aperitivos are not widespread across Italy. They're generally um, focused in Northern Italy. Most of them hail from Northern Italy, where my family is from. So I have the... Uh, the, the happy day to um, explain to you how close these alcohols are from my family's hometown in Italy. Very excited. Drops here to mind sweep and finish all the glasses left over. No, he has to stream. He was like, how much do I have to drink? How much is this going to hurt? Because he's had grappa. I remember the first time that I gave it to him, he was like, can I have like two more? And I was like, no, no, you can't. Because I would like to enjoy your company tonight. <laughs> hey, Endless Leave, how are you doing? Are you ready to drink? Get your drink on. Um, so moving to the digestivos. So the, the aperitivos are kind of sweet. The digestivos are sweet. They can actually range from really bitter to mild to really sweet but with an edge of bitters. That's where a lot of the herbs come in because this is a digestivo, something that you have after your supper and it settles your stomach and gets everything digesting. And generally everybody outside of Italian American or Italian culture doesn't really believe that these things happen, but we swear by it. You can't eat without this stuff. You can't think about eating without this stuff. A pint of grappa please, right? Oh, you would or you're, you're at work. Does it come in a tail can? <laughs> so, um, digestivos, you know a lot of them, like Amari, Fernet. Um, so, I actually listed the different ones on their, on their taste scale. Like, everybody knows Sambuca. It is intensely, intensely sweet. This is made from star anise and uh, there's a couple ways to prepare it. And actually my lovely assistant, Drapavana, will be coming in because I forgot to bring a few accoutrements that he had to pick up so that we could drink the Sambuca together. And you will hear me call it Sambuco. I'm not talking about the region in Italy. It hails from the same region. But when I was a kiddo, because um, as, as children coming from a Northern Italian American family that is very industrious, and me being the sixth child, we all had to have a trade. I was a, uh, a house cook and a drink maker. I could make a competent drink by the time I was about eight for anybody that came over to the house. So that's why I'm so crazy about this. Um, yes, the coffee bean, that's exactly what, uh, what uh, Drop is gonna go get. Could you get the coffee beans? We call it con, con le masca, um, where you put a coffee bean in there. It enhances the 
anise or anise flavor in the, in the alcohol, it's really good. And I have a couple ways that I like to drink it. This is fascinating. I've heard so many of these before, but I didn't realize that they were under these categories, existed for these purposes. Levi, I'm here for you. You're going to impress your next dates. I promise. I promise. And I'm going to make and some really, really easy mixers that you won't be able to forget. A lot of these are one part, one part, one part. So there is one fancy drink that I'm going to make, and it is something that is for the ladies. So gentlemen, pay attention. You need to make this for your ladies, okay? Um, you've been to Italy. Olive Garden is so much better. <laughs> so, all right, so I, I have these listed out. So uh, the really intense ones is like limoncello. Uh, a lot of people confuse that for grappa. It's kind of like grappa, but it's processed a little different. It is distilled. We'll get into that. Look at these coffee beans. And this is actually pretty useful for me as we're doing the tour because all of these smell differently and look very different. Do you see how bright this is? That's a bright yellow. Some sambucas come in a red or a deep blue. We have uh, both of um, both of our vermouth, which isn't native to Italy. I'll get into the story about that. It's actually native to Germany, and France took it over and mispronounced it, and we'll get into that. But the Italians are famous for the rosso, and that means red. It's sweet, but we also make the regular kind. But we have all sorts of different colors. And you know, I just brought my shivas in because it goes good with everything. I'll show you how to mix this in, it's very important. And one non-Italian drink that we're gonna be having today, or non-Italian component, is uh, I have some Bombay Sapphire Gin. So, you know, that was my number one fear in college. I would have these nightmares where I would wake up and I would, oh, hey, thank you for following. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, but I would just have uh, these nightmares. I would wake up and think that the world had somehow run out of gin. And I still have those nightmares. <laughs> and I do not, oh, hey, Zevik, thank you. Yeah, I was trying to get a hold of you the other day. You should check your messages. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's move on because I'll just keep talking, talking, and talking, and you'll be here for hours. Uh, so the midtones are like Strega, the witch one from uh, Benevento. Um, amaretto, everybody knows amaretto, like amaretto sours. That's probably one of the, the, the more famous. Oh, I'm really glad that you like it. I like alcohol. Alcohol doesn't like me, so I'm probably going to do all of my explaining now and then slowly get faded very quickly in a very ladylike manner. Uh, the mid-tone uh, sweets, amaretto, strega, uh, and then you have your uh, more of mild, like your grappa, right here. And grappa den generally comes in a clear color, and we'll get into the processing. This is a, an aquavite, or an aquavit, so it's much like vodka or uh, the, um, the Scandinavian aquavit, where it's medicinal, it keeps you warm, it's vitamins, and it's economical. Economical. Oh, you have. Okay, good. Good, good. Um, what did you miss? I'll, I'll get to you after stream. I won't bug you with it now. So, what we're going to, what should we start with? Does anybody have all of these things that I've listed? So, we've got some Frangelico, we've got some Campari, um, we've got our Strega, we have our Vermouth, our Rosso, our Grappa, our Sambuca. Um, does anybody want me to start on any one of those? Because I think if you don't have an opinion, I might start on the Sambuca. Yeah, Levi has the best dreams. Well, except after Drapaduski, because Drapaduski is my beloved, and if I don't say that his stream is better than Leviathan's, I'll get in trouble. Okay. All right. So, okay. I'm going to make an executive decision, and we are going to start, this is just coffee for now, because um, a lot of these mix into coffee, but we'll get into that. We're going to start with the Sambuca.
This is a mid-range Sambuca. It's Lazzaroni. Um, it's, it's pretty good. It's like a step above the core of beers, the cores of beers. You can't go wrong with this bad boy. We're gonna set this over here. I like to, to serve this in a, in a large glass so that you can, so that the aroma, there's like a large space at the bottom so that can just uh, waft up to you. There's a, maybe you should apologize for calling Aquavit for European, Norwegian, I said Scandinavian. Uh, yeah, whoops, sorry. This is just coffee. I'm gonna fix it, don't you worry. But it is just coffee. Um, okay, so Sambuca, so like I said, it was it's mild. So there's three different kinds. Comes in three different colors. I think I said that already. So this is the clear. That's the most common. It's the most mild. And then they have a, a blue colored one, which has an, a lot more pronounced anise flavor to it. And then they have a red one, and I'm not sure of this, but I think it has cinnamon undertones to it. And it's, it's not as pronounced. The anise is, is kind of the same level as what you would find in the, in the white variety. So um, there's several ways to prepare it. I like to put it in a large glass. Um, and I think this is an Amasa Cafe. Yeah, it is an Amasa Cafe. So um, this is something that you can actually take a, a small or short shot of or put into a sipping glass like this, a brandy glass. And um, after you have your espresso, because espresso is, is made really, really quickly. So it has that really thick layer of coffee oil on top. And you just take a couple sips of this and it cleanses the palate. Um, people don't usually mix it in. Uh, a lot of Amaza Cafes, um, they'll mix into their actual coffee, like uh, Frangelico, but we'll get into that. I'll be mixing that into my coffee. Um, and let's see, what else do I need to tell you about it? it what does it taste like? Pizzelles, I told you it tasted like Pizzelles. Oh, yeah. We're, we're back to the coffee beans, these lovely little coffee beans. Just amazing. Since this is so intensely sweet, here, I'm gonna move this to the side. Since this is so intensely sweet, brand new bottle, I go through this pretty, pretty regularly. I'm just gonna pour just a little bit. And look at that, it's just, I don't know if you can see that, but it's really syrupy. It doesn't even have legs, it just sticks to the side of the glass, like a good after dinner liqueur. Oh, it smells like, like anise, like Pizzelles baking in the kitchen or being pressed up in the kitchen. All right, so we're gonna set this aside. I'm gonna show you how to prepare this, this bad boy. Oh, one thing, it's, it's like ouzo. Are you guys familiar with ouzo? It's a, also an anise-based drink. It has the, um, the same properties of ouzo. I think they call it the ouzo effect. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. And in fact, what I will do is my lovely assistant will bring me some ice so that I can show you what happens to it. And we'll, we'll get to that. But the, um, yeah, everybody loves ouzo. Levi, thank you for hosting. I really appreciate it. How you miss the, hey, wushu. Mega host, I'll take it. Um, so we prepare it con le mosca, which means with a fly. So we take a coffee bean. Some people take one. I prefer to take three. If you're in Rome and you have to act like the Romans, you put seven in there for the seven hills of Rome, yada, yada. But I like three. Uh, some people, this is highly contested why there is uh, three little beans put in there. I was taught as a little girl when we would sip on it that it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Trinity. Um, but a lot of people say that it's health, wealth, and prosperity. So I want more people to see this. Don't worry, I'm recording it. So um, I might cut the recording short, though, if I get as, as slizzard as I think that I'm going to get. So I prefer three... Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, please protect me from hangovers. Oh, you can smell it on the top, on the top of the anise. This is super sweet. 
Oh, chicao is really sweet. What I like to do is set this aside and, um, and let these, these little flies, these little beans, these little good beans, soak up all of that anise flavor. And then later I chew on them. Some people like to pop it in their mouth, like not even in here, just right in their mouth. Chew it up. It's really good if you cover it in chocolate, by the way, just saying. And then it really enhances the anise flavor. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It lights up your whole mouth. It's like a party in there. I'm sorry if I have coffee grounds in my teeth now. Well, actually, no, I'm not sorry. I've already had two sips of alcohol. I'm good. This work is bullshit interfering with my stream launching. I'm sorry. Hey, Nostradamus, everybody loves Uzo. So this has the Uzo effect. So what I'm gonna do to show you that, I'm gonna leave these little flies in here so they can soak up all, the, all of the anise goodness, and I'm gonna munch on them later. But the Uzo effect is, is that if this comes in contact with water for a large period of time, actually, let's just save this. We'll come back to it and I will show you what happens to it. Let's just set this back here. So do we have any questions about Sambuca? Like where it comes from, that sort of stuff? I think I covered everything. Oh, no, I didn't, I'm sorry. So uh, Sambuca actually in Latin means elderflower. So this is made of a mix of um, elderflower, licorice, and star anise or star anise, depending on which side of the pond you're on. So I think that pretty much covers it. Yes, no, yes, no. Sorry, I'm just gonna give this a little stir. Can you see this over here? Because I want it to be a surprise. I'm not looking Uzo off my hand. No one clip this, no one clip this. You can't do licorice? Why, because licorice does you? That's what I always hear. Um, yep, you're drinking flowers. And oh, I forgot, this is a digestivo. So this is something that you have after you eat. So remind me if I don't tell you if it's an aperitivo versus digestivo. So I am going to take a cleansing straight coffee swig. And um, does anybody want to see anything next? One question, are you gonna judge me if I tell you that I want to have one of those drinks while I'm at work? No, that's what desk drawers were made for. It's probably related too much to Jaeger. Yes, it's kind of like Jaeger, kind of like Uzo. It all has the, the licorice and anise flavors and it's all got the same digestive properties. But of course, this one's Italian, so it's naturally better. Sorry, not sorry, can't help it. Okay, so let's see. The next one we should talk about, let's talk about grappa because it's Drop's favorite. Naturally, we make everything better. Um, so grappa, it's kind of a clear alcohol, really. Um, like I said, this was this is a, like a aquavit. It's it's a keep you warm for your health. Grandmas across Italy and beleaguered fathers just say this is the only thing that keeps us together. And I'm not kidding. So this is this is really tied to mental stability de-stressing, and it is a, um, a digestivo. Uh, some people can use it as an aperitivo. I've heard of it, but I don't know why they would do that. Um, and we make everything better. Oh yeah, Drop isn't in here. Yeah, he's gonna come in. I'm, he's gonna hear Grappa, and he's gonna show up and tell his Grappa story. Um, so talking about how this is made, this is a distilled, um, this is a distilled spirit, okay? So how do I put this without it making, making it sound really bad? You know the stuff that's left over from winemaking, uh, the skins of the grapes, the, the, the crushed up seeds and things like that? That's what this is distilled from. So it's a, it's a very thrifty alcohol. There are very few um, wineries or distilleries that grow and, and, and make their own brand, they're usually sent out and they're, they're batch made. Um, but this one is uh, one, of the, one of the few vinters that, that do their own. And uh, they have 
from four different vineyards, from four different locales and different kinds of grapes. And, and this one happens to be my favorite. And I'm going to take a really, really small swig. Actually, you know what? My assistant should do this for me so that I don't get effing blitzed. Has anybody, has management seen my assistant? I require an assistant. I need assistance. So in Italian culture with these drinks having so much importance as they do, are children allowed to partake or observe at a drinking age? Of course not, that's illegal. But my father thought that I would die and or grow up. Oh, let me, um, it's just a twister. Oh no, this is court because it's one of the fancies. Okay. Um, or right, let me, uh, here, I'll take it and I'll open it. I'll open okay. it. I don't trust you. I've had a little cork in me. I don't know if you can handle it. If you break that cork. Um, did I just say that live? Oh God. Um, bring in the stun drinker, right? He's found his calling. No, I don't like the, the twist thing. That's just awkward. Just give me the old fashioned one and I'll show everybody. No. Are you... He's, he's fucking with me right now. You should actually bring that cute one. That's that guy and bring my, and bring my, my Nux. Um, so my father thought we, we got watered down wine at dinner. Um, and we like, I, I was the drink maker of the family. So I taste tested these. Like I had sips from probably by the time I was like seven all the way until now to taste and make sure that everything was good because you didn't want to serve your dad the wrong drink. That was just catastrophic. Um, on bad days, this is how I, I open my wine bottles, but I'm not there yet. Not quite there yet. So can I have, um, yes, this one. Here, let me show them the other one. This, it's, it, it, uh, why? Why? Who invented this thing? It has a church key on the top or a bottle opener. That's how you get closer to God. That's why I call it a church key. Um, and that's all it's good for. I don't want these sad little arms being like, whoa, 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 whoa. I think you're an alcoholic. I'm going to tell your mother. Uh-uh. No. This is just bad juju in your kitchen. Actually, we should get rid of that. Um, this is just, it's for me. But in my humble little tiny opinion if you can believe it this is the way to go so when you're uncorking something there's a there's a little serrated edge right here that's what you use to cut around the top you just hold it against it and give it a happy little spin happy little spin bring alcohol to the masses you're opening it up like a present okay so then you have this little cork in there so we're going to close that blade I'm going to open this and pull down this little corkscrew. Just get it right up there in the middle. Give it a few twists. I mean, twist it like you mean it. Always screw like you mean it. Because your reputation will be ruined if you don't. And then this goes all the way down here. You simply cock it over. It snaps into place. And you pull that baby out. Oh, yeah. Grappa's OP. OP. Yes, this is, he's never had grappa this good. So this is, and I want to warn you, do, grappa is on the scale from delicious to horrific with very little in between. You can hurt yourself with grappa. Don't mess around with it. Get the good stuff, okay? Clip that. When does the drinking start? I've been drinking. Nestles, I didn't bring the old fashioned stuff on because I thought you were going to be out of town. I might make an old fashioned today just for Nestles. Um, She's going to nap after stream. <laughs> I'm not going to be napping. <laughs> I'm going to be doing Irish yoga on the couch. <laughs> Sorry, babe. He's Irish. <laughs> uh, if you watch this video without it, it's like porn. Oh, you go around. <laughs> Can we get your straw? <laughs> okay. All right, moving on, children. So, I'm giving them the porn sounds. No, I'm just really uncorking. Uncork after a long day. Hold on, I've, you're gonna pour way too much of that. You don't understand how strong this is. This is stronger than anything I've ever given you. 
you're gonna hurt yourself. So, glugs. You gotta measure the glugs, it's about 10 glugs. Okay. Smell it. Oh, look at him go! I mean, I can smell it from over here. That's how strong it is. It's really, really uh, potent. It smells that way anyway. That's gonna burn. Are we gonna uh, just do this or? Not, don't take it like a shot. Take a sip first, see if you can handle it. I don't want you throwing up. Instant red in the face. He might be leaving for a few minutes. He had a big breakfast. Woo! <laughs> I don't know if you can see the tone. That is good shit. <laughs> so, and we're gonna take a small break and we're gonna show you the Uzo effect. So this is what I mean by Uzo effect. This was the clear closer, Sambuca, right? And when you put water in it, like any, I think most of the anise, the really strong sweet anises do this. They turn into a, into a milk. Usually they only put a little droplet of water so it's really thick and it literally looks like milk. Can you guys see it? I'll bring it closer to the camera if you'd like. I could do like 10 of those but they are so fucking delicious. Yeah, but he would be dead. Guys, permit me. Somebody permit, oh, I don't know. Hey, Arson, what are you doing? Oh, Flash Smash is here. Let's give that man the bottle. No, he'll die. So what do you think of the Sambuca? Tell them. I didn't try this one. You want me to try this one? Yeah, try it. Ooh, it's very licorice. And let's see. I've been taking shots to a Sid Star. That's really good, though. If you like licorice at all, it's, uh... Thank you, D2. It's very good. He said the flavor compounds in the anise only uh, dissolves in a certain percentage of alcohol. So when you add water, it precipitates out of solution. He also followed. Oh, you're a follower. Thank you. Thank you. If I could follow you back, who would? Mm, God, that is fucking good. It is good. Here, have a, have a little chew on that. I don't know about all that. Just give it a try or a shot. Fun times. I don't drink all that often either. Oh. Yeah, but take a, a sip after that. It's good. Yeah, it changes the whole dynamic. The anise just has a party in your mouth. A yeah, <laughs> it'll get you. Remember, all of these liqueurs are liqueurs. They will fuck you up. Be careful. And let's say I think you can post the clip without getting wrecked. Try it. Yeah. My grandmother would bake anise cookies, right? Set them aside for 30 days to bring out the anise flavor. That's right. Hey, Basil. Yeah, we are gonna have a good time. We're already drinking. Already drinking. Got wrecked. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even see it. I didn't even see it happen, actually. Yeah, I don't know why. All right. So, um, do we have any questions about, did we, did we finish that all about grapple? I think so. I think so. It's, it's a pretty straightforward kind of drink. It was a pretty straightforward, um, uh, yeah, oh, yeah process. I think I see it. I see it. Can you? Just go ahead and try this. Yeah. Oh, and Blink already did it. One day we're homies, the next day you stab me in the heart. Blink. Don't hurt my nestles. Fix it. Shima, what's up? You're a good guy. Doesn't appear to be a command. Through the mail? We need that functionality. Twitch, if you're here. Mr. Twitch? We Mr. Be able Twitch. To just dump alcohol on the computer and it flows. Right, and, um, but can I also get smell a vision too? Because I cook, you know? Um, can we talk about another. Uh, oh, did I tell you? That's a digestivo. And we're going to do another digestivo. We're going to go on to the strega. Near and dear to my heart, from Benevento. Benevento is a city that has a folklore about it that all the witches in the world meet there. Kind of crazy, right? Uh -huh. So this is uh, Benevento's um, Strega, the core. Strega means witch, uh, which is also my nickname. Like I said, my name's Trey, and my friends call me Trega. Is Pugs here? I didn't see him. 
Um, it's kind of chartreuse -y. A lot of people th like make the mistake oh, thinking. Donated. Did he donate? Yeah. <gasps> Thank you. This next shot is for you. I'm actually gonna do a drink for Pugs for the donation. Thank you for the donation. Um, so a lot of people mistake this uh, for chartreuse. It kind of looks the same. It's it's a very bright yellow. Can they see that? I'm checking. You're checking? Yeah, they can see the yellow. Yeah. Uh, it's really, really bright, but it doesn't taste like it. It's got a lot of um, cinnamon, Irish, or, or Irish. I haven't been drinking Iris. Um, mint, juniper in it. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? No, I was using your account to, to put lols in the chat. Oh, whatever. Um, so my nephew's name is Trey as well. Hey! Yeah, all the cool Trey's. Is, is the other Trey in, in here? Pay to get them shots? Drunk on stream? Right. Hey, look, you just got affiliate right now. What? Yeah. It just said... You now belong to uh, affiliates. Congratulations! No, it doesn't. Check it. It yes, does it, not. I can't do it while we're live, but it just No, up. I didn't. I just didn't. just popped up. I, that's what it said. I didn't apply for affiliate. They, they tell you on, uh, automatically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's the magic spaghetti liqueur. Of course. We have to booze every day now. I'm not a witch. Affiliate? <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is amazing. So, uh, I like this straight up. So, oh. Pugs with another donation. Oh god. I'm going to have to have two pugs. You're worth it. You're worth it. $10. $15. I'm going to go back to the liquor store. I can't get this open. <laughs> Thank you, pugs. Mwah. To you and your family. Yeah, that that grappa. Just running right through me. <laughs> I was sitting here like, good God, this fucking hell is hot. <laughs> yeah, it's so hot. Okay, so you can have this straight. You can have it chilled. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it chilled. I'm gonna give it a shake. Let me introduce you. Where's the cat? Smell uh, that. Smell that and tell them what that smells that looks like. Looks like it's just covered in sugar. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what to describe that as. It's got juniper. It has iris. It mint in there of like camping yeah it's it's very woody it it's it's a very complex liqueur yeah, that smells really good actually and all of these liqueurs you know have upwards of 70 ingredients they're they're tightly held within uh in, in secret with their families and their uh and the companies that make them this is a really cool looking bottle as well is it yeah it's got like a little distillery or whatever that is on where is your goal? I, I hit my goal. You you got me there, man. Plus five. So thank you. What is this? <gasps> Wooshu, thank you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is like too much. I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Alright, here. Okay. So pour like about a shot and a half in there. I want you to see how what he thinks is shot happens. He's a madman. Oh, this is Mr. Penguin. He's my little shaker. So, make sure that he's all nice and tight. I think, Shumo, that's because Pop she was not affiliated or anything. I think you can increase the uh, quality of the video after that. Like, when I first started out, I had terrible quality. And then once we got... Um, uh, once we got partnered and stuff, or even at affiliate, I think I could up, up the settings. I don't know why, but you're not the only person that said that. Because we have all our settings set too high on OBS. It's just so good. It's just so good. Of course, now, because it's chilled, you're supposed whoa, to hold whoa, it here. Whoa. What is this? Pugs with another donation? Oh my god! <laughs> In 720? I don't know. I think it's because I'm not a, a partner. I think that they prioritize a lot of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. Did you want a sip of this? Because you better get yeah, in here and snap right. it up. You got, you got a little donation train going here. You need to look mm. 
Oh my God. So we've got, okay, I'm going to go through this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Okay. So Pugs started off the legendary donation train at $5 and then he followed it up with 10 and then Wushu got in there. Good times, man. Good times. And then we've got $20 from Pugs and Tilt had to get in on the action. And I say, salud to all of you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Mm. Okay. We need to, everything's okay. You better, yeah, you better try it. Cause I will just suck this down. Sraga is like one of my favorite drinks. Did you change it? It's just this, why does it smell different than it did out of the bottle? It's just chilled now. Oh, here. No, it's... Wow, that is really good. It is super that good. Is really good. It's really complex. It's, it's, it, and despite the complexity of Strega, mm. it doesn't overpower. Like it's a very balanced liqueur. Even the sweetness doesn't over, <gasps> Thank you for jumping on that happy train that gets me to the liquor store again. You should take a shot for every donation. <laughs> I'm going to, I take a sip for every donation. These are liqueurs. Come on, guys. Come on. Um, here, yeah, try it. Try a little bit of it warm because it tastes different. There's a, a big difference in taste yeah, be between awesome. the. <laughs> yeah, another ingredient that we didn't go over today was aspirin. You're going to need a lot of it. So. <laughs> See, doesn't that taste it's completely got, different? It's got more of a kick. Warm. Yeah, it has much more of a kick warm. It's a lot smoother when it's chilled. So. Yeah, that gave me goosebumps down the spine there. That one, that one. The cold one, it was like. Mmm. Just, just fabulous. Just fabulous. Um, you can have this con cafe, you can have it in your coffee. It's a great accompaniment for your coffee. Um, one of my favorite ways to have it before I was a, a vegan is to take vanilla ice cream, sprinkle nutmeg over the top of vanilla ice cream and pour that chilled over the top of ice cream. Strega and ice cream, let me tell you. It's like a combination made in heaven. It is ambrosia of the gods. The gods. Affleck. Griff drips. <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. It is amazing. Another thing is if you make a, a, a really rich spice cake, Levi, you can pour that over like a glaze over the top of the cake. And you don't even have to frost it. And it just, it's so good. No so dairy. good. No dairy pugs. I'm gonna get you some water next time. Yeah, he's gonna get me some water so that I don't die. <laughs> yeah. Chambord on ice cream. Yeah, that is really good. Yeah, I'm intolerant. That was what really pushed me onto the onto the veganism train and on top of my health. But we might get into that later. We haven't decided whether or not we're gonna talk to you about that a little bit. Look at that glass. Pugs, you don't think that the dairy industry harms, oh, harms the animals? Hey, D. D. Yogi. Yes, thank you for the water. He, that's, this is why he's my beloved. He knows that I'm gonna get wrecked. Mm. All right, so we've gone over Sambuca. Strega. And what else have we already had? Jesus, I'm only three in. Sambuca, Grappa, Strega. Water. Aqua. Um, how are you, Dogi? Dogi? I got it. I figured it out. Oh, that I'm not going to get into. It's very sad and very heart wrenching, but there are a lot of documentaries out there on the dairy industry. So if you do buy milk, get it locally, very locally. Um, but anyways, that's a personal thing for me. I don't like to be a vegan evangelist. 
I, I just do my thing, you guys do your thing, and I just try to do right, but I will not say that the dairy industry is kind to animals. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll change your world. Like, be very careful how you jump into that, because it, it, it just it hurts your heart after you find out about the dairy industry. Um, so we did Sambuca, Strega, and Grappa. So we got our toughies out of the way. Those are the ones that really pack the punch. Do you, um, milking a cow doesn't. How do they go about on a commercial scale is pretty fucked. Right. Yeah, that's exa Thank you endlessly. Um, let's see here. Oh, tea beads in here. Um, so what should we do next, dear? Uh, what was that? You know, if you're going to... Showed me that map yesterday. Are you gonna do that now? Because that was really neat, actually. Oh yeah! At the end, what I'll do is I'll place all of the alcohols in the area where they come from in Italy. Because when I got home from the from the liquor store, I'm like, babe, look! This is from Piedmont. This is from Torino. This is from Milano. This is this is Italy. This is central to northern Italy. <laughs> He's like, you're mental. <laughs> all right. So, you know what, let's go on. A lot of people already know about vermouth. So I think vermouth is German, and I can't remember the, the original name, but the French kind of took it over. You know the French. And uh, they named it vermouth. And it literally means wormwood. Now, of course, everybody knows that wormwood uh, became quite illegal. People were having way too many hallucinations too many uh, drunken displays in public, and uh, wormwood is, is generally not allowed. I think maybe in Germany? I think, I think it's okay in, in uh, some of Eastern Europe as well. Yeah, in Eastern, yeah, because we, we had the chance to have absence with wormwood. Poland. Yeah, um, so I think maybe Eastern Europe, I think maybe Germany? I don't know if it's like a difference in regulation. Hey, Emma. So, so basically, it, it means wormwood. Here, let me get to my, to my, just so that I don't miss anything. So, the Italians, it's usually clear. The Italians made a red version. It looks amber because it's, it's in a green little jug. So, most of these are dry. And for the longest time, you could only get dry or sweet. It was probably, I don't know, maybe a hundred years ago. I could be totally wrong, but it was a bit ago. It's a few minutes ago. Um, in Turin, um, yeah, I need to sober up. That's what I need. <laughs> they made arroso, which means red, and it was the first sweet vermouth out there. Now, of course, now the Italians make the, the dry, and now if you go into, like right next to the gin and the liquor aisle, you see vermouth that's extra, extra dry. Extra dry folds your laundry with sarcasm. Super sweet, semi-sweet. I just, I don't mess with that shit. I just go, <laughs> sorry, I've been drinking. Dry or rosso. <laughs> so, um, this, the, the rosso, it, these are, uh, it's necessary for like Negronis. You make it with Campari. This and gin equal parts, and that will get you a Negroni, which is, uh, I think, one of the most underrated Italian drinks out there. You know, you'll, you'll see it a lot in Italian cinema. You know, everybody's drinking Negronis. So, Vermut in German. See? He knows. So, it's, and that basically means wormwood. The name Vermouth is the French pronunciation of the German word. Vermouth. Okay. Negronis are great, definitely underrated. Okay. Um, I used to work for a wine and liqueur distribution center. I got a hold of a super old Sambuca bottle that was from overseas with the opium still in it. Every ounce, every once in a while, I take a few shots, but it really gets you. Oh, I bet it does. <laughs> oh, forget it. Yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, ways that we used to produce liqueurs that are just just slightly frowned upon today. So if you can get a bottle of antique liqueur, you might want to do a little research before you open that bad boy up. So um, it's, it's bitter, 
It's slightly sweet and it is one of the great drink mixers. It's also really, really cheap. <laughs> it's pretty good, pretty good. Um, opium say no more. It is, it's for medicinal uses. All of these things are for medicinal uses. Were you guys not here when I started this stream? You cannot eat without this stuff. Come on, come on. All right, so since we've gotten a little saucy, I really wanna bring some solemnity back into this stream because we're talking about some amazing cultural advancements uh, and so we're, we're going to bring uh, Father Angelico in here this is amazing also very underrated this was like your nonna's medicine <laughs> like you only thought that uh, nonna's and women of oh gosh now my age <laughs> drank this stuff if you like Nutella this is going to be your best friend. This is amazing. It's nutty. Hazelnut. It's sweet. It has vanilla overtones. It's just, I can't say enough about it. And look, it's, it's a monk. It gets you closer to God. Come on. You know, when you drink responsibly. No sinning aloud. You had an old fart. Okay. So let's talk about this. This this comes from I think the Piedmont area. You know, like Alsace Lorraine. You know, the very um, northwestern side of Italy. This is relatively new. This is like 130 maybe years old, but they've been making this stuff for a long time. A lot of people liken it to the Italian Kahlua. There's no coffee in it, but it's it's a great um, accompaniment. And uh, the legend on here, the legend on here is really cute. I love marketing legends. According to legend, Friar Angelico lived three centuries ago in the rolling hills of Piedmont. I was right. Ha! Um, in the shadow of the Italian Alps. Awesome, sorry, I was totally right. Um, through his love and knowledge of nature, he created a precious liqueur made from carefully selected hazelnuts and other very secret ingredients. You know, and you just don't want to ask about that. I mean, what do monks really get up to? Really? You don't want to ask. You got to leave some things to life's mystery. It'll age you prematurely if you find out. Um, we continue the tradition by proudly offering this fine liqueur in the honor of his name. I bet this guy never existed. But if he did, I'm sorry, and we'll talk in the afterworld. Um, and I'll be thanking you. <laughs> um, we might have to try some. It is lush. It's amazing. It's it's pretty um, middle of the road. I think you can pick it up in America for like 20 or 30 bucks. But you know, this is your nonas, your grandma's the core. Okay, we're gonna give this a sniff. Oh, it's just straight up nuts. It's nuts in here. It's like a strong hazelnut. Like, it really reminds you of Nutella, like when you open it up. It's amazing. And you remember how earlier I said that I was drinking straight coffee? No longer. This is uh, amazing in coffee. Everybody does this, I swear. So we're just gonna put a little bit in. It's super sweet. Actually, I'm gonna have a little taste of it. I usually mix it in with something. It's been a really long time since I tasted it. Like this is one of those drinks that when you're like 13, you open up the old lady liquor cabinet and you're like, all right, I double dog dare you to take a swig. And that was the last time I had it straight. So let me tell you about the aromatic bouquet outside of coffee. Hazelnuts, that's just straight up what you smell. It's super sweet. It has a little bit of spice at the very beginning and then smooths out to a sweetness. The sweet at the beginning really just kind of like punches you in the face, especially when you have a dark and bitter soul like me. Maybe you guys will be fine. But it, it evens out at the end, okay? Um, let's see, I wrote down, what else is there about this? I think I covered it. Oh, the mixies, yeah. So, soda. You can mix it with soda, straight up soda. I've never done that. I've never tried that. Maybe we should do that. 
But one of my favorite drinks involves this, and I'm gonna show you that in a second. In fact, my lovely assistant, uh, my lovely assistant, my lovely assistant, Drop of Anna, is gonna put on the tea kettle so I can show you my very favorite way to make a Frangelica. We, we call it a, um, a sassy sorella, which means a sassy sister, so a sassy nun. It's really good. Can you turn the burner on underneath the tea kettle and set out a little teacup for me? And I will show you the magic of a sassy sister, okay? Yeah, he's, uh, he's actually sweating a lot. <laughs> Grappa makes you sweat. You need to know that. Grappa makes you really sweat. Frangelico is a digestivo. Um, it's a, we say con cafe. It's really good uh, to get rid of the, the sour or the, the thick, slick taste of an espresso. You will never use Kahlua or remember the name Bailey's ever again when you sip an alcoholic caffeinated beverage. Let me tell you, you need to put this in your cupboard. It's really underrated. Go get some Frangelico and get your grandma on, okay? Take a break to hold his hair over the toilet. <laughs> grappa on the grappa. <laughs> right? That's about it. That is about it. Okay, just to wake myself up, I'm just gonna take a little sniff of these coffee beans. Whew, I'm actually, I don't know if you can see the sheen, I'm sweating, <laughs> like a lot. I've had a sip of grappa, sambuco, strega, um, frangelico. I'm gonna be soaking. <laughs> this is not how you do this. You just have one drink before or one drink after. I'm basically, this is a cry for help. I'm about to hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, please turn on the air conditioner. Thank you. Are you, are you sweating as much as I am? Hooey! Um, it'll get you. We're both drenched. Like, in fact, I'm going to take a short, short break and I'm going to air out a little bit, okay? I'm dying. I want to throw some ice on my forehead. Here, let me mute that.
<laughs> so what I said was, whew, forget it. No, leave the oven mitt. <laughs> Got some hot water on over here. Sorry, we had to go outside, air out a little bit. Medicine done kicked in. This stuff with all the herbs it is not meant to be drunk like this. So we are taking one for the for the Dropadouski Delady, and uh, thank you for the host, the the Levi team, <laughs> bringing you all the alcohol out there. So what I'm about to make is the sassy sorella. Sorella means sister, um, so or nun. This is my favorite drink. When the boys went to bed or they went to go play cards, we would make this. So what you do is you start off with a little teacup. Sorry, I had to get my little tea strainer out of there. I'm a little teaholic. Um, lip reading stream, right? <laughs> Take drunk, yeah, I'm kind of hurting myself. So we have a cup that says the best is yet to come. I'm not sure that I believe it because we still have like three more alcohols to go over. We're gonna take um, a good shot of Frangelico. And we're gonna set that into the mug. Just pour that on in. This is OP. This is an amazing drink. This is gonna be one of the more complicated ones, and it's not that complicated. You're gonna be so proud of, of what you've learned today and the skills you've learned. So limon. And what I like to do is just take a little piece of the skin and wash it first. We'll take that little rind, drop that in there into the frangelico. Any questions so far? Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, you've you've permitted the term bitch. <laughs> well, it is my middle name. Might as well. Um, <laughs> you guys. So we've got our friend Jelly going there. We've got our, our lemon rind. What else do we need? Oh, cloves. So, I don't know how automod works. I thought it was permitted to message. Oh. I just clicked don't allow because it was tea. Because it was tea? Yeah. We'll allow you tea. So I like a just a little pinch of cloves. About yay big. And you drop that on in there. Okay. And then we get our mitt, because safety first. Safety first. What did you black out because of? Attended bar or two in my time. Because of what, T? The shot took you back. We're gonna go ahead and pour about a cup of hot water over the top. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's a sassy sorella. And we're just gonna let that steep. Oh God, I wish we had smell-o-vision. This is a perfect nightcap. We're just gonna set that right there, let that steep up. It's amazing. Chocolate cake shot? I had no idea. What is a chocolate cake shot? I don't know what it is. Car bomb, I haven't had a car bomb since it was legally allowed in my 20s. Um, Let's see, did I miss anything that I told him last night? No, I think that's it. Oh, one thing that you might wanna do is add some honey to that. I don't particularly like it sweet. I think it's sweet enough as it is, but I'm gonna have Drop taste it. So we're gonna add some honey. I'm a crazy beekeeper. This is what raw honey looks like. Smells so good. We're gonna drop it. And this is holy honey, which is going into the holy liqueur. Um, the bees that I rescued that gave me this honey, I got a call from the, um, the church, the Catholic church in Tortugas. They had had a vote and they decided that honeybees were sacred. So they brought us in and we did the cutout. They had lived in their, um, 
in their uh, side chapel for two years and they were starting to come into the building. They weren't just staying in between the air conditioner and the wall. So I lovingly moved them over to one of my hives. And I call it the holy honey. Praise Beezus. Praise Beezus. Tastes straight up like chocolate cake. Half vodka, half angelico, coated lemon wedge and sugar. Ooh. Ooh. It's amazing. So my lovely assistant is gonna come in here in a few minutes to give this a shot. Her, her. Your lovely assistant is going to try a sassy sorella with legit honey. Um, that's the rule that I have. I don't sell honey. I give it to people when they're sad or I trade with it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't bother my bees by harvesting their honey. It's only every once in a while. Um, I pulled that honey off because the, the comb was four feet deep and we just, I couldn't fit all that honey <laughs> into my hive. So next time I do um, have a big batch because I just have enough to keep my household running. Um, so probably uh, by winter, right before winter I'll check and you hit me up and I'll, I'll send you some honey, honey. So this is called a Sassy Sorella. It's got cloves in there hot water. I put some honey in. I don't particularly like it with honey, but you like the, the sweet stuff. And it's got a lemon rind in there. Just give that a smell. Let them know. Smell it from the hallway. Time to get sassy. That's right, Levi. You could smell it down the hallway. Oh, yeah. This is a marvelous evening drink. It really good. So good. Anything with lemon. And you, you're going to notice anything around the Mediterranean. We got lemon jello. We got lemon everything. Tastes like those it's a hot lemon time. candies I got from Rich Brass. Yeah? So good, so good. Mm -hmm. Like candy. Yeah. It's amazing. It settles your stomach. Mm -hmm. It's really good for you. Sends you right off to sleep. It's like the perfect Delady approved nightcap. Gets you in bed and whoever you want to go with you. That's not true. I'm sorry. That is inappropriate to say. Go ahead, slap it. Slap it. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll delete that clip. Oh, that is so good. I haven't had that in years. So good. That is real. I've never had that. That was delicious. That's about one shot. So you can take a few more sips of it without getting jacked. Have we checked if the lovely assistant is over the legal drinking age? All right, challenger. Everybody knows he's younger than me, but he's not that much younger than me. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? That's delicious. Don't chug it. Don't chug it there. I have a chugging problem with the booze. Send me a message. I'll send you a jar and we have it by the gallon. Oh, okay. You haven't tasted legit honey? Legit honey is good. And honey has a lot of different flavors depending on what the bees are feeding on. Just amazing. Thank you, Pugs, for, for being our honey, our purveyor of honey. So let's move on to Campari. Campari is a relatively new liqueur. I think it's like 100 years old, maybe. Maybe a little bit older, maybe 150. Um, it's complex. It's spicy. It's bitter. Uh, interestingly enough, so they just stopped doing this maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was us crazy vegans that made them stop. The reason that this was red was they would grind up the outer scales of insects to give it that red, um, that red flavor, or the red flavor. <laughs> I haven't been drinking. <laughs> um, I don't know what they call that, but we, we would call it carmine but there's actually a name for it. Um, so they stopped doing that a few years ago because us crazy vegans were like, no, bugs life matter too. So any Campari that you get these days is bug free. You're just gonna have to move over to the tequila section. Is that really why people were pissed? Yeah. About the bug grinding? Yeah, for the color. They all know we're gonna be eating bugs. Pretty soon, years. pretty soon. Bugs are people. Pretty, pretty 
so the bitter nobody really knows what's in this like no i i've I actually tried last night to find out. I'm like, oh, Campari, I, I don't have any idea what's in this thing other than there used to be bugs in it. Um, and there's a, there's a little orange. It's like half the size of this. It's this little orange that's really sour. And I think that's what makes this sour. But don't quote me on it. It comes from the same region, and I'm pretty sure somebody told me that story once. I don't know if it's true. But, so nobody really knows what's in this, but what I do know is it's delicious, and it's integral in a lot of things, like the Americano, uh, which is like a Negroni, but a, a American style, so instead of having the gin, the vermouth rosso, and uh, the Campari, you swap the gin out for seltzer water, which my lovely assistant will be bringing me shortly because it's on top of the fridge. Every time he leaves, I'm like, my lovely assistant. <laughs> so annoying. Yeah, bug juice, bug juice. Honey projection is straight up cancer. Do, do, do. I give you the courage to ask anything. Yeah, anybody that you want to get into your bed. It was made from lice. The insect was the cochineal, cochineal? Bug juice, it's fetal juice. I knew that there was a specific term for it. I'm lazy and I don't like to do research. I'm sorry, I'll try to do better next week. So actually this is kind of fun. I would like to do tours of other kinds of alcohol from other regions. It's just, you know, we grew up with this in our home bar you know, it was a lot of these were large com uh, components of the drinks that we had uh, growing up and watching uh, my parents drink. Um, I grew up in a household where we actually had a liquor cart in the living room, and my father would always say that's what separates us from from the heathens. Anybody should be able to walk through the door, name the drink that they want made, and we should be able to provide that for them, or we're bad hosts. And so I. I aspire to be that way. That's why I went to the liquor store and got some extra stuff. And it, and it gave me such happiness and brought me back uh, into uh, a lot of lovely memories of my parents. So this has been pretty neat. But I would like to tour other kinds of liqueurs from other countries. Maybe we can start like a little fund me campaign to get that done. But don't start now. Let's, let's uh, do a poll and then at the end of the month, I can see how much is left in the kitty after groceries, and maybe we can vote and decide where I get some fancy pantsy liqueurs from. Pretty exciting. Party with the dooskies. Yeah, and actually, I remember, uh, it was after my mother passed, uh, one of my girlfriends, uh, or her, her best friend, this is, this is how we did it. My, my father had passed. Um, and my mom was kind of the last to go. And we had just seen so many funerals. It was, we just didn't want to go through the same song and dance. So my sister and I came up with this idea. I'm a death midwife, by the way. So this idea had been floating around and I had seen it executed a few times. Um, but we invited, we, we had all of the family come through the house and pick what they had wanted or, or receive what my mother had set aside for them. And then we opened up the house to all of her beloveds, all of her friends, all of, the, all of her acquaintances that wanted to reconnect with her and maybe didn't get the chance. And instead of doing like a yard sale or a drop off at Goodwill, we had a party. Uh, drinks were flowing, everybody, it was a potluck, everybody brought food, everybody was super respectful and lovely and we shared stories and people took what they wanted and then the next day, I was getting ready to send everything off to Goodwill, and I drove to my mom's house, and her best friend, who had taken the liquor cart, had come up with her husband, and she said, I loaded everything, all the furniture, so that you don't have to go to the Salvation Army and drop this off. You don't have to do that. It was just truly one of the uh, most loving days. Sorry, most loving days. So, yeah. So it's lovely to have a full bar. Sorry, I've been drinking. I get a little leaky. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, 
All right. So this is really earthy, spicy, and sweet. It's, it's a very, very different kind of drink. You love some of the drinks from the Basque region? region? Pecan are great. Actually, I've heard a lot about the, uh, the liqueurs up there. I've never tried any. That would be amazing. And I have a friend of mine that's going to the Cantabrian coast uh, this September. So maybe I will send them with a, a little wish list and see what they can get back in the country for me. Um, yeah, it was, it was a fantastic day. It's a fantastic day. All right, so all sappiness aside, I'll take a swig of this. Just to calm the nerves, you know, and get the clove out of my mouth. Don't watch. All right, I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna take a little shot of Campari because I'm gonna actually try to break this down. It's a mixer. You know, we don't often have it straight. Uh, it's the straightest I've ever had it is it, it's mixed with soda. So let's see what this bad boy tastes like. Let's clean out one of these little shot glasses. I thought I had enough glasses. I was wrong. Actually, let's just put it in the base of one of these because because we're going to be making Negronis and Americanos. So let's open up this bad boy. Yeah, the Basques actually know how to cook. You see, this smells actually pretty mild. Maybe it's in the mixing that it packs that punch. Look how red that is. I can't believe you guys know so much about Italian liqueurs. I'm like, yeah, some bug stuff is in there. And everybody's like, well, actually. <laughs> you guys are the best. And my lovely assistant's gonna come in and taste this. He's so sick of being called my lovely assistant. This is about almost a full finger, so that's about a shot. All right, punches you straight in the face with sweetness, followed by an avalanche of bitter, and it settles into a really earthy flavor. It's just, it's magnificent. It's one of the better mixers from Italy. It's truly a staple in anybody's liquor cabinet. Don't yell. Don't yell? Don't yell. Oh, have a good day at work, Twisted. We're all frantic on Google getting all the information to show up. <laughs> I, is it grapefruit or something at the end? No, there's no grapefruit in there. It's a sour orange, I think. It, I can't prove that, but I'm pretty sure that it's sour orange that's in there. That it's it's really hard to to I don't think that there is an ingredient list. Actually, is there? I have a bottle of it. Let's see. What's in here? It's different. It it has like the citrusy taste, but it reminds me of grapefruit. I'm not a big grapefruit. It's a big um it's, a, it's an aperitivo. It gets your, your juices going. It doesn't say anything of what's in here. I think it's, it's sour oranges. I'm pretty sure it's sour oranges. If there are anybody in chat or anybody wants to volunteer in chat to try to look that up, if you can find out what's in this, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out some way to reward you. Kisses. I'll blow you kisses all day. Um, so this is something that every Italian American needs to have in their bar right now. It is the ultimate mixer. It, it just works with and blends with other um, different kinds of alcohols beautifully. Like the Negroni will be gin. So we've got our Bombay Sapphire gin right here. And we've got our, uh, our Rosso, um, <laughs> this is what happens when I drink, vermouth. Thank you. He's all like, vermouth, babe. Can we, can you hand me the strega? You want me to take some of this out of here? Yeah, I can just move it over to this side. So 
So the Negroni is, is really, really easy to make. It's equal parts. Campari is a blend of alcohol, sugar syrup, and infusion flavored with oranges, rhubarb. Oh, okay. Endlessly for the win. He actually went to their, um, to their bottling plant. Oh, it's Campari. The pasta stream. There's going to be pasta every week. I'm powered by pasta and plants. Mixture of herbs. Yeah, that's, that's what is really hard to discern with a lot of these aperitivos, digestivos. Um, so this is going to be equal parts. So it's equal parts Campari. Equal part gin. Remember, red, sweet, vermouth. Come on, open up. It's gonna have a kick to it. It's fabulous. Coffee pasta. This is the food stream. Yes, and that's a, that's a good point. This is a Milano, um, uh, uh, a Milano product, Milano liqueur. All right. So we're going to ice this just a little bit. Let's give it a mix. I'm just trying to steal myself from. <laughs> really buzzed right now. So this is sweet. It's going to pack a punch. I'm going to put a little ice over it. This is a marvelous summer drink, by the way. It's very refreshing. And I think my lovely assistant has given up. But if, you, if my lovely assistant wants to show up and, and taste this, he's more than welcome to. It tastes like summer. It just tastes like summer. It's super sweet. The bitterness is muted. It, it just cleans your tongue right off. It's crisp. Um, it's satisfying. It doesn't taste like this kind of beer, but a sour, lemony beer, like a summer beer, like a sour beer, it has that same gratification to it. It's just a perfect summer drink. You can really, it brings out a lot of the, the, uh, the juniper in the gin. It's pretty fabulous. Are you still sweating? <laughs> The AC is like down to 62 degrees. Ooh. It's like, ching out. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's actually pretty smooth. I know. How are we together? I like the Shivas like too, but he can't stand gin. I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. We get along otherwise, and I always have gin in the house. It's pretty. Gin makes him black out, is what he said. Oh yes, he just had a sip of it. What can I tell him later that he promised me that he would do? Hmm. Hmm. You're at work and you want to drink? I want you to drink at work too. But you can take all of this marvelous knowledge and impress your wives and your friends. Okay, what else do we have here? Is Nestle still here? Because if Nestle's is still here, <laughs> I'm gonna try to do an old fashioned. At the end of all of this. Oh, an Americano is uh, is basically this, but sans gin, so it's a lot sweeter. Oh my God, who's gonna drink all of this? <laughs> Sorry. Why, I'm getting the gin again. No, bad tray, bad to lady. All right, so one part, <laughs> vermouth. One part Campari. This 
is gonna be stiff. <laughs> and then we got some seltzer water. Watch me make this explode. Every time seltzer water, just behave, people are watching. Thank you. Gotta talk to it nice and sweet, or you could have an explosion. And I like a little bit more than over one part of the, uh, the seltzer. And then we're gonna throw some ice in it. You can, guys, just don't get caught. You're gonna mix it all and chug it and pass it out on the cat. No, I'm not. I promise you. I, I love, accept, and value and cherish myself. That is not gonna happen. Where is it? Um, yeah, you could, I could just imagine myself like mixing them all together, like, Viva Italia! <laughs> I'm too old to have hangovers like that. Fizzy, summery, way more sweet than a Negroni. Let me tell you, it's a little bit too sweet for me. This would be more up Drop Sally. So, this is an Americano. It's a twist on the Negroni. Yes, way too sweet. Way too sweet. Oh, is he gonna try it? He's all like, I'll try it. He's hearing way too sweet. <laughs> You'll be one of them beer heads. <laughs> Drop stream today should be a blast, right? Am I slurring? Just un poquito. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna keep that one, thank you. <laughs> He's just gonna keep that one, thank you. All right. What else did we miss? What are we missing? We have to be missing something. I am not nearly drunk enough. Cosby, here you are. Is Nestle's not here? Because if he's not here, I'm not going to hurt myself further and make it old fashioned. <laughs> Jesus. I'm lit. Um, she's too old for this, too old for that. And she can't even be more than 25. You are my new best friend. You. Creepy eyes. The OG. 25. Somebody clip that. I need to send that to people. <laughs> Your drink is right here. I made it, it's a Negroni. Come on by, come on by. All right. Nestles is at the beach, yeah, with his family, doing family things, not drinking with us, drinking with other people that he loves more than us. That's fine. Clip that, send that to him. He needs to know. All right, so we went through Campari, Frangelico. Uh, where is my Frangelico? This is what will end me is the, uh, the sassy, huh. Where, who? Okay. Oh, he says I'm missing chat. Kanasi's here? You said hi a while ago, no love? I'm sorry, I've been drinking and mixing. Mixing and drinking, it does not mean that my love for you has faded, anyone bet. I love you a lot, especially a lot because I've been drinking. That's just what happens. So this is the Sassy Sorella, and it's that's the best one. It is Drop Juicy approved. It is a mix of uh, lemon rind, honey, hot water, pinch of cloves, full clove sticks, and uh, frangelico. It's amazing, the best nightcap ever. And since I'm gonna be napping pretty soon, <laughs> it's, it's perfect. It is perfect. So, okay, so we went through the martinis, the strega, the campari, the grappa, the angelico, sambuca. I think I'm as lit as I'm gonna get. I think we've done it. We have done it. Am I missing anything? Because, I mean, everybody knows about Amaretto, Aperol, all of that stuff, right? And does anybody have any 
any tours that they want me to look at, any any tours of, of a country's liqueur. We have the Basque region of Spain, which sounds pretty fantastical, pretty fantastical. I'm going to sit back and, and finish this drink with y'all, if you don't mind, if that's cool with you. An hour and a half of a straight drinking. <laughs> I haven't done this in an age. Tour of Mexico, tequila and mezcal. Oh, I can, I can do that tour. I'm in the Southwest. I can take a drive down the street and wave to Mexico and it will wave back at me because Mexico is awesome. Uh, mezcal is really good. You know what? Um, why wasn't I invited over today? D, you are always invited. In fact, if you want to drive your pretty little ass up here, sorry, I've been drinking, D. <laughs> if you want to drive up here, this, I'm holding a sassy sorella. So I basically took frangelico, cloves, uh, a lemon rind, hot water, and honey, and mixed that all together. It's like a nightcap. We will be napping by 2 p.m. if you show up. D is a magical creature, people. Everybody say hi to D. Um, yeah, so we've gone through Frangelico, the Vermouth Rosso, the Stregas, the Grappa, the Sambuco, the Campari. Um, I think I'm done. I'm just gonna sit back and chillax with y'all. And, oh my gosh, did I? Oh my gosh, thank you, Pugs. That's amazing. Pugs for the win. Thank you all of the people that donated today. You, you're um, furthering my liquor cabinet and my ingredient list. My, my fancy, fancy. Uh, you're feeding my, my nutritional yeast addiction. I know that sounds really dirty, but it's not. It's delicious. Cheesy and delicious. And I appreciate all of the support and the love that you guys give me. I really do. I really do. Wineries in Okanagan in British Columbia are to die for. Gorgeous countryside. Okay. You know, I'm not so good with wine. I like cheap wine. So back in the day, I used to work with some pretty hoity-toity people, and they would take pity on me. And we would go out to these fancy restaurants with these fancy wines, fancy dinners, fancy suits. And finally, uh, one of the doctors was like, listen, girl, we're going to sit down and we're, because I, you know, I'd host a lot. And so they always expect you to pick the wine. And I would always just shove off and be like, ask doctor or da, 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 ask this person. And he was like, listen, you have to learn how to do this. And so he tried so hard to, to pick out the different notes of the wines and the tannins and this and that. And I just found out that I like cheap wine. <laughs> My palate prefers cheap wine. Actually, all wine. I've had a few expensive wines that I really liked until I got the bill. And then I didn't appreciate them as much. Happy to see them too, you know? I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Mad Dog 2020, great flavor. Um, D actually can um, attest to this. I'm a Slambrusco kind of girl. I like to put on some Beastie Boys and have some Lambrusco, some Rio Nidia, and I... <laughs> oh, there have been many nights. Many nights that I can't seem to remember. And, they, and I'm pretty sure that they were fabulous. There, there were no marks on my hands from handcuffs, from cops being called. I think it went well every time. Every time. Show my age. <laughs> my, yeah, right? I just did really out myself on my age. Yeah. Me and needy on ice. You're not a wine person, but tons of wineries out there. So you just basically want me to IRL a tour of wineries? I could die. I better take life insurance out before I do that. Before I do that. That would be very smart. Whew. So, does anybody have any other ideas? D, do you have an idea? Is there, is there a region of liqueurs that you would like me to traverse? From my couch, of course. I'm actually not gonna go there. That's okay. Anybody? Anybody?
I just caught the video of myself. I'm looking a little haggard. Here, let me straighten myself up. Like my father always said, there's no such thing as a drunk lady. <clears throat> All right, everything's better now. Some real, I have some real moonshine. I don't know if I could survive that. Ales, chingon is like ales. I love, I love really bitter beer. I just love it, sour and bitter beer. Anything that's like my soul, I just gravitate towards. Great. I have some real moonshine. I can send you regular and apple pie. He's down for it. I've had moonshine twice. Homemade. Yeah, it was an experience. And it's really smooth. I've never had smooth moonshine, so that would be very interesting. Absent the correct way. I've had it prepared for me. It's pretty good. Imperial Reds is where it's at. That's too sweet for me. Moose drill. That's a, actually, that's a pretty good good beer. It's like a meal, actually. Make an old-fashioned next time for sure. Yeah, I have to wait for Nestle's um, to make the old-fashioned, but I got all the fixings just in case. Good shine doesn't burn. Well, then I've never had the good kind, let me tell you. <clears throat> they hop the fuck out of them so it doesn't, so it balances really well. I'm a neat or on the rock sort of gal. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, have I guys talked, have you heard the good word about whiskey stones? Do you have a moment to talk about whiskey stones? Um, so I like very cold beverages, but I do not like my beverages watered down. Like, I wouldn't even sit next to a lady that puts a nice cube in her wine glass unless I already knew her beforehand. It just, it just won't happen. So whiskey stones are like a soap stone and you put them in your freezer right? And then you just drop them in your drink and it keeps it ice cold without watering it down. Like, how did I live without them for so long? I've only had them in my life for six years, but we have a really good relationship now. Us and Whiskey Stones. A Don Draper drink, right? D. Um, D is, is one of my dear friends. I've known her for several years and she does not actually believe that Dropadooski exists and that he is in fact, my, my real boyfriend, because Drop doesn't leave the house. Um, so now you've seen him in the virtual world, D. I want to hear about it. Make some homemade root beer and then make some ice cream floats. I would love to, but I'm vegan. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not going to happen. Well, we do have nice cream. We have fake ice cream. And a small amount of water is good for whiskey, but not much. Yeah. One Cuban whiskey is perfect. Yeah, a lot of people like to cut their whiskey. That's fine. It really depends on, on what kind of whiskey it is, honestly. So, but Crossy, I, I really want you to impart this message to Nestles that I did show up prepared. It wasn't my fault that he was just, you know, being a good family man with his family on a beach today for the Memorial Day weekend. He left way early, but I was here for him. Just a drop, opens it up. I've never actually tried it with just a drop or a little squirt of soda. Maybe I should do that. Then live it. Yeah, is good stuff. All right, so a whiskey tour, is that what you were saying, Dee? The Basque region of Spain. And Kanasi, I need to actually look at where that was again, Kanasi. Hold on. In BC, but you said where it was. Hold on. Hold on. I can get to it. I thought I saw it. I've lost it. Kanasi, can you send me a message? I'm sorry. I've, I have failed you as a streamer today, Kanasi. <laughs> Hey Dave, how are you? Welcome to the stream. I'm sorry that you only get the drunk version of me. If you had shown up earlier, I, you would have seen the sober version, I swear. Scotch specifically? Yeah, scotch is OP. What do you guys think about the blendeds? Anybody, anybody? Feels deep, man. 
Hmm. We have glasses and glasses of alcohol just sitting here. So I've never had that. Never, never. All right. And I don't know if my if my lovely assistant wants to come back in. Does somebody say shivet? Because we, we just so happen to have some, which we're not going to open today because I don't want to die. I don't want to die. But um, I'm not sure if my lovely assistant wants to come in here and help me uh, close up stream. It has been an amazing stream. Uh, I'm going to look into the affiliate thing. I can't believe that I got affiliate. <laughs> And all of you, you, you lovely, lovely people, we've got um, a whole bunch of donations. Hugs, Butcher, Tilt, uh, Wushu. Um, thank you so, so much. Thank you for everybody that followed. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> the Velvety Double Wood 12 Year Blend is excellent. Under 50 bucks. Hey, anything under 50 bucks, I'm down. Yeah, I'm gonna figure out exactly what's going on. Do you think that, do you wanna sit and chill with me for a little bit? If you want. Yeah, that would be great. Do you guys mind if we just sit and chill and chat with you? For anyone who's a scotch drinker, must recommend. Okay, next time we go, we will, we will definitely go get that. And you're streaming, you're not streaming until later today, right? Uh, probably about 30 minutes after you're done, 45 minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Depending on how close I am. Oh, do I, get, I don't think I get a sub button with affiliate. Yeah, you do. We have to fill out the paperwork, though, too. It takes, like, Oh, so hours. I don't have it. You do have it. You I do have fill it? Out the paperwork, and then it's done. And then it's done? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty excited. Pretty excited. Drunk Barb pushes go, go, go. That's what we're doing today. <laughs> I already wrote up the tweet. I hope Dee's still in here so that she can see him. She doesn't believe you exist. Here, do you want to finish this too? I am slicer. Sure. Maybe that's what we'll do today. We'll just go as, as long as we can with the drinks and then we'll just call it. <laughs> I, uh, can you define as long as you can? A couple hours. I've never had anybody watch me nap before, but I guess it's okay. I'm pretty loosey-goosey. I'm, I'm pretty know, much later, okay later. with everything. You'll do what later? Get drunk. What do you mean? Are you going to sit in there with me when I stream too? No. No, because Timpy's going to be in there and he's not going to talk to me. And I've already had a few drinks and it's going to get me upset. Is Timpy in here? Hardcore stream wall, Shez. Right? Shez, where have you... Yeah, where have you been? This is the drinking stream. Come on. Just got drunk and played the Sims drop. What's the Sims? I don't, I've never actually played The Sims. I, I don't know what it is either. I've watched people play it, but I've never played it. Somebody told me that The Sims was just Facebook, just a little bit more virtual. I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Kids, kids, kids. Whew, um, wow. That is really good. Yeah, here, you should just hold that. Very magic. Here, if you can hold this, I can curl up on the couch without scaring anybody. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, nice name change, Blinkini. Bikini? No, it's Blinkini. It's good stuff. Why are you always so toxic? Endlessly toxic? Is that what it is? <clears throat> yeah, I'm... Is it nap time for you or nap time for me? Is this like an intervention, Addy? I'm, I'm good with it. I still have my coffee. Oh no, I've got Frangelico in my coffee too. <laughs> Everything is turned There's alcoholic. All of the, uh, <laughs> all of the cups. There's booze in every cup. And you took some cups into the kitchen so that, cause I'm like, you hear me say that on stream all the time, waste not, want not. So I'm like compelled to drink everything. 
It's for, yeah, okay, it's an intervention. She's telling me I need to nap. I haven't even bunched him in the throat. The goth nun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eddie. Really appreciate it. Whew. Wow. What is the Frangelico is the one that's... It's the monk. I don't think I tasted that one. It's... Let's pour some more alcohol. <laughs> Father Angelico, down the hatch. That sounds really dirty. And sacrilegious, by the way. Let's just delete that from the stream. Is there a way to delete things from stream? I'm just going to give you a little tip yeah, of it. it. Oh my god, that smells really good. It's like Nutella in liquid form. Whoa. <laughs> no wonder you like those drinks so much. It's like candy. Shit, that is yeah, it is candy. It's really good over ice cream. It's just Ooh. fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Nestle's was in here earlier, though. Yeah, yeah. You're a bit worse for wear. Whatever. I'm fine. <laughs> Frangelico in the coffee. Never really did care for it. I don't know. I don't know. Chingo, and you can have as many shots as you want. Chopped. What's that? Yeah, I think so. All right. You want to go home? We'll go home and have some drinks. And uh, I think we're at the point where I can uh, just call it. It's been lovely to hang out with you guys. I'm actually going to let my lovely assistant close up the stream today because I am a little toasty. Well, you have to stay put because you have the mic. Right. Everybody, yeah. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. It's been a lot of fun drinking with you, and I'm looking forward to drinking with you more later. <laughs> Are you drinking later? Thank you guys so much for all the support. You yeah. Said. Thank uh, you so for much. Both of us, it really, really, truly means a lot, and um, you guys support me and her like crazy, and um, I can't thank you guys enough. So everybody, I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. And I will be going live in probably about half an hour. I'm just going to brew up a pot of coffee. And feed me. And finish <laughs> the rest of the drinks on the counter. And then I'm going to go put the bar. <laughs> Let's go. It should be exciting. All right. I love you guys so much. We'll see you later.